The Sinner is an American TV show in which each season the protagonist, Detective Harry Ambrose, played by Bill Pullman, delves into a psychological case which highlights the complexity of the human mind. But in turn, each case reveals a little bit more about Ambrose as a person. Season 1 was envisioned as a close-ended miniseries and received two nominations at the Golden Globe Awards, one being for Best Actress and one being for Best Miniseries. The first season star Jessica Biel as Cora, a woman who in the first episode is enjoying a peaceful day at the lake with her husband and son before she grabs the man who is sitting in front of her and stabs him to death. Jessica Biel is also the executive producer for both seasons of the show. The story for season one comes from the 90s novel The Sinner, written by German crime author Petra Hammersfarr. The novel and season one of the TV show are similar in the way that the mystery unravels, although the tone is said to be a little different. In an interview with IndieWire, Sinner showrunner David Simmons said, The book is very dark. It has a very German frankness about sexuality and psychology. It's pretty unflinching. There were aspects to the book that felt kind of relentlessly dark and depressing. When I imagined them actually putting that on screen, I thought, wow, this is a lot for an audience to handle. The themes that David is talking about here is abortion, Nazi references, and sexual kinks. But one of the larger differences between the book and the TV show is the character arc, which has changed when the husband actually turns his back on his wife in the book almost immediately after the incident. The show was obviously a hit and seven months later, the series was renewed for a second season. But with the book ending, quite literally, you may ask, could this get any better? And my answer is surprisingly yes. But how much better, you ask? Season 1 received 94% approval rate on Rotten Tomatoes, while Season 2? 100%. Many critics acclaimed season 2, claiming it had higher stakes, better tone, and more alluring characters. And above all, it surpassed all expectations. Overall, if I'm judging on a harsh day, I'd probably give season 1 like a 6.5, not quite at a 7, maybe 7, 6.5. But season 2, solid 8. Season 2 picks up only a couple of months after where we've left off, and Detective Ambrose is back and more freaking likeable than ever. This time he is brought in to help investigate a double murder committed by a 13 year old boy who was on the way to Niagara Falls with his family. But this is the sinner and there has to be more to the story. The reason this show works is because of its genius self-serving formula. Like a movie, you start off at the edge of your seat. The sinner poses the cliffhanger at the start and urges the audience to move backwards and throws in some mini cliffhangers at the end of each episode each revealing a new clue. But it's also clever in the way it serves these cliffhangers to the audience, allowing them to work with the complex situation, where as a viewer, they are forced to use their emotional intelligence to work through the riddle. This bonds you to the series and to the characters. And the structure is all about triggers. It's about looking at someone's deepest, darkest motive, their dark string that's being pulled, and you need to figure out why and what led them to that consequence. The show is often compared to True Detective, but unlike the existential crisis and the partner drama, the show reveals something about the detective in a thoughtful and unique way. But mostly we accept his subplot because one, it's balanced with all the other clues coming together. Two, we are empathetic to his character because he's empathetic to others. And three, he is the constant throughout this chaos. In a world full of good and bad and black and white, this show makes us live in the grey area. And that's really interesting because it's something that feels uncomfortable but is also really curious. And it also reminds us that not everything is as it seems to be, which is a lesson that us as humans forget over and over. All the characters have intent and a reason they are the way they are, which makes the overall series so much more compelling. The show's structure is also genius in the way that it can carry on forever as long as they keep the complex riddles. There's there's always a story to be pulled back and deeply discovered and if we're going to follow the same detective into the fire, it will only strengthen our bond. So the real question here is, what's next? I loved The Sinner Season 2 obviously a lot more than Season 1. Um, season 1 was still interesting and something that definitely I kept on the back of my 
my mind um, after seeing it, but season two just blew me away and made me want to go and rewatch season one and maybe even read the book. I have not read the book. If you have read the book and you have seen the show, let me know what you think down below. Um, if you haven't, definitely check it out. I have not given away anything. There's so much to be discovered and I really recommend it. It's on Netflix in most countries. And if you enjoyed this video and this little look at the Sinner 2 and 1, the overall series, um, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, it would make my day. Just hit that button and you'll get some free content at your fingertips. Two videos a week. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys very soon. Stay spooky.